welcome back to my channel and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be touching on weight redistribution during egg recovery. This is something I sort of briefly mentioned in one of my other videos and then someone asked me if I could do a video dedicated to it. So today I'm just going to sit down, have sort of an open honest chat about kind of what it is, my experience with it, along with kind of some of the science behind it and the reason as to why it happens and how it happens. So hopefully you'll find this useful and interesting, especially if you're currently going through egg recovery. So without further ado, let's get straight into the video. Thought I would start by just touching on briefly what it is. In case you don't really know, you may have heard about it, but you don't know what it is. Essentially, it's a survival mechanism that your body utilizes during the weight gain phase of eating disorder recovery. Now, obviously, depending on your eating disorder background, you may not always need to gain weight. However, if you have been in a situation where you've been eating a restrictive diet and lost a lot of weight and now are at an unhealthy weight, essentially your body will have entered survival mode, which means it's basically doing everything it can to just keep your main vital organs organs working and to keep you alive. So therefore when you start trying to increase food intake and gain some weight, what tends to happen is a lot of the fat you initially gain appears in your mid region. And the reason for this is that your body is trying to protect the vital organs whilst there's food available and it therefore stores that extra fat in that midsection, really helping to protect things like your heart, your lungs, your liver, your kidneys, in order to help give you the best survival chance. And then progressively over time, what tends to happen as you continue to eat sufficiently and your body learns to trust you again, that fat will redistribute across your body and store itself in different areas. I guess sort of, yeah, kind of touching on my personal experience with it, I did tend to notice sort of, you know, that kind of initial weight gain in the mid region, which <laughs> given that everything your eating disorder has been telling you and given everything that you fear, that is like your worst outcome. Suddenly gaining weight in that midsection, which you've worked so hard to lose. It can be frustrating and I know definitely it was a bit of a shock to the system but it was hard to accept to see that initial weight gain, not even just factors in the mid region but just sort of visibly seeing that increase in weight and that fat gain and learning to accept it. It was challenging, it was hard especially when you know clothes start to fit differently and you feel differently about yourself as well. However I guess sort of understanding why that's happening helped. It definitely didn't mean that I didn't feel insecure about it or was unsure in how I looked and it sort of made my confidence wobble slightly. However, I think knowing why that was happening massively helped me to realize, actually my body's doing this because I put it through a lot of basically. And it's now just working to recover from that damage. So kind of understanding that gives you a different sort of appreciation for what's going on. And then sort of after kind of getting that initial sort of mid-region fat again, sort of the redistribution kind of did happen, but I also started to notice other areas which were gaining weight or gaining fat as well. And I remember particularly for me, sort of I noticed, there was one day when I noticed that my thighs touched again. I'd obviously been working so hard on gaining that thigh gap that society tells us is desirable and the way we should look. Noticing that I was like, like, wow, this, this is happening. My body is changing. And I think for me, that was the main kind of shock or thing that woke me up to the fact that I had gained weight and that my body was changing, that my body was adapting and I did have more fat than I had during my eating disorder. <laughs> and it was definitely a shock to the system. However, for me, I do tend to store sort of more fat towards kind of my lower regions, around sort of my thighs, my legs. And so that was just a normal part of how I was going to gain that weight back. Then I also kind of started to notice it in like other areas as well, so around my arms, around my face, however these were sort of later down the line. So as I said, it was kind of all initially in that mid-region and then I started to notice it more around my legs because that is where I tend to store more of my fat. So that kind of said, given that's kind of the order that I got it in, yes, commonly for a lot of people, you will first gain it in that mid-region for those reasons I explained earlier. However, where you then start to notice it, will vary massively depending on where you tend to store more fat, your genetics, your body composition, etc., how long you've been in your eating disorder for, and yeah, basically just how your own personal body works. So you may notice it in a completely different region next or completely opposite end of the scale to where I first noticed it. However, over time, sort of particularly that mid-region kind of fat, it does regulate itself. So that I think is sort of later down the line when you notice kind of other areas, or for me personally, as in it was my arms and my face, etc., where you notice a little bit more weight. However, that's kind of 
more at the point where your body's starting to trust yourself again. It's where that kind of mid-region fat starts to redistribute. And it's when you can kind of realize, you know, what you're doing is actually doing something right for your body. Your body is learning to trust you again. It's gradually coming out of that survival state. It's gradually redistributing that fat and it's no longer all just wanting to store it in your mid-region. So it kind of is a sign that you're making progress in the right direction. That said, of course, in the initial weight gain phases as well, you're not only just gonna gain that fat in the mid-region, that'll be your predominant area you will gain it in some of the other areas however you may notice sort of other areas increasing size or changing shape etc more so during that redistribution phase where that fat does start to distribute across your body however it is therefore more evenly distributed across your body and not all just concentrated in that mid region so overall your body kind of balances itself out and you sort of gain back all your fat in all the kind of right places to kind of give you your shape that makes you you and your body unique to you as in terms of sort of how long it takes going from initially gaining a bit of fat and gaining a bit of weight particularly in your mid region to then noticing it in other areas to sort of getting to point of full redistribution it's hard to pinpoint because as i said already all of our bodies are so unique and individual to us that no two people are going to be exactly the same. And not only will your genetics and your body composition and how your body works come into it, but also how kind of quickly you end up gaining that weight during recovery, how quickly your recovery process is, how much of a roller coaster that recovery process is, because that's completely normal as well. To sort of keep seeing the weight go up and then maybe have a little bit of a wobble, it may slip back down, then may go you up again for a little bit. So depending on your own personal recovery journey as well, that will massively affect how long it takes for that fat to redistribute and how long it takes for your body to trust you again once it can see a steady sort of increase in that weight and a steady availability of food again. So for some, they may notice differences within months, for others, it could take one to two years. However, don't let that scare you. Let that be at the back of your mind as a tool to encourage you to recover. The sooner you kind of get going with the process, the more you stick to it and the more you're able to push through with it, the sooner you'll kind of reach that point of weight redistribution and your body will fall back to kind of its natural shape and its natural set point of weight as well. I guess also something else to point out is that some may notice sort of fat gain, weight gain more than others. And that, again, is just to do with how we're so individual, how our bodies work, our natural kind of body composition, our genetic tendencies towards body composition as well. And that's completely okay. Just because someone's recovery point looks completely different to yours, doesn't mean you've done anything wrong. You've done what's right for you and what's right for your body and for how your body sees itself as healthy. Also, depending on how long you've put your body through restriction, how long you've been severely underweight, can massively affect as well your body's response to sudden increases in food. And also depending on kind of how you progress in recovery in terms of how much you need to increase your food by, what state you need to get yourself out of in order to get yourself back to healthy, that can all massively affect the rate of weight gain and the rate of weight redistribution as well. So again, don't let that put you off and use these kind of factors as an encouraging factor to know that the more effort you put in, the more you push through, the quicker you'll kind of reach that point of natural health again. I guess it is important to kind of briefly touch on sort of set point theory as well, which is kind of the idea that our bodies do have a certain kind of weight they're happiest at and we do tend to sort of naturally gravitate towards that weight so this will become the weight where your body works at its best where you feel most energized where you feel like you're thriving where if you are a woman you'll get your period back if you lost it or if it's become irregular at all it'll become regular again and you have a consistent flow kind of all these sort of signs of vital health will regulate at that weight and they'll be working at their optimal. And that's the most important thing to remember because even if in recovery you notice high fat gain, particularly in your mid-region, or you overshoot your pre-eating disorder weight, that's just a normal part of recovery. That is your body's way of ensuring that it's got sufficient fuel and it's still learning to trust yourself again. Because I guess that's something else to sort of think about in terms of weight redistribution. You won't just kind of reach your sort of ideal weight, often a lot of people will overshoot their pre-eating disorder weight and that's just simply your body going, we may enter another state of survival soon, we may enter another famine state, meaning I need to store some extra fat, have that extra fuel and energy there so that I've got that to survive the next one better. And that's because our bodies are smart and they're constantly adapting to whatever situations we put them in in order to better cope with it next time. As you fuel your body correctly and it no longer sees that it's gonna be in that starvation state again anytime soon and it's learned to retrust 
you, your weight will pull back towards your set weight and your weight will even out to kind of your natural set point along with sort of your hunger cues, etc re-regulating themselves as well back to kind of more of your natural cues that often get lost during your eating disorder so even if you overshoot your pre-eating disorder weight it's definitely not something to be concerned about and it's just again your body being smart and preparing you for potential future starvation and that will all regulate itself as part of the weight redistribution process and as part of recovery, given that you consistently keep fueling your body right and it can trust you again. Hopefully that's kind of given you a brief sort of insight into a little bit of my personal experience with weight redistribution and also a little bit more insight into how to kind of expect your body weight and fat storage patterns to kind of change over the course of recovery so that one you're not shocked when things like that do happen and two so that you kind of understand why they're happening and that in the end you will gravitate back towards your body's natural set point and your body will re-regulate itself to its sort of happiest point and where it's most healthy as well so hopefully you've taken something from this video and hopefully it's kind of helped you if you are currently recovering to kind of better understand what to expect and the process that's going on in your body if you have found it useful then be sure to smash a big thumbs up on this video as well as be sure to go ahead and click on the little red subscribe button down below so that you see more of my content as well as be sure to tap on that notifications bell so that you get notified whenever i upload and i'll be sure to see you very soon with a brand new video bye